Do you have really high standards of yourself and always have to do it right? And no matter how much you try and how well you do, you still doubt yourself? Do you even base your worth on your achievements? And this might be at an unconscious level, but just look within and see if this is something that resonates with you. Are you hard on yourself, leaving no room for mistakes? and in return can be hard on others as well. Well, today's video is on perfectionism and I'm gonna give you eight steps on how you can build a relationship with this part of yourself and start to change these destructive patterns that can definitely lead to depression. So if you're into growth and transformation, be sure to check out my videos. You can subscribe to my channel below and make sure to hit the bell if you wanna be notified when I put out a new video every week. So I work in mental health and addictions and I've completed Dr. Gabor Maté's Compassionate Inquiry online training. This really hit home for me and this is when I started to realize that I had perfectionism as a coping mechanism and that it really wasn't serving me in my life anymore and that I could start to do things a little bit differently. And so one of the things that I... I uh, really like to work on with my clients is this aspect of perfectionism because there's so many people who really do struggle with this and don't really understand where it comes from. So if you would like to learn more about this, you can check out my website and the link is in the below description. So before we dive into the eight steps that I'm going to let you know about, I'm going to give you a definition of perfectionism to me. So I've struggled with perfectionism most of my life. Um, it's had definite cycles within my life depending on what stages I was in. So there are two forms of pushing yourself. There's the healthy one where you're encouraging yourself and you're getting your goals done, but you're doing it in a healthy way. And then there's the other part where you are pushing yourself so hard that there's just no room for failure. So someone who struggles with perfectionism might struggle with excessive concern with doing it right. So no room for mistakes. They have very high personal standards. They are incredibly prone to criticism. So they don't deal with criticism that well. And that's only because they tend to criticize and be really hard on themselves naturally. And so that rolls right into doubting oneself. So people who struggle with perfectionism tend to doubt their actions. Even if they've put out their best foot forward, they'll still doubt themselves. They tend to have a preference for order and when things are out of order, they may feel chaotic inside. And a lot of this comes down to childhood. So perfectionism definitely stems from childhood difficulties or childhood trauma. And they developed this part of their personality where they need to be perfect for approval. If they don't get approval for something or they fail at something, then they can really fall into a deep depression because their identity is attached to this, this aspect of being perfect. So let's dive into this. We'll start with number one. So usually you are your worst critic. Usually how you see yourself and nitpick all the little things within, nobody else out there even notices. I'm just going to give you an example. So you could be having a conversation with someone and then you say something and you think it sounds stupid and you're just, you walk away after and you're like, what the heck? Why did I say that? And you just feel like you've done something wrong or that the other person is going to be judging you. But I guarantee the other person is not thinking about you, didn't even notice what you said and doesn't really care. And I'm going to give you a tip. When we are thinking that someone else is judging us, we're actually judging them. We're saying, oh, this person is thinking this about me, they don't like me, or they're judging me, but we're actually judging them. We're projecting our own insecurities onto that person and making an assumption that they feel a certain way towards us or about something. So understanding that you usually are your worst critic well, that has really helped me on my journey to becoming healthier within this aspect of myself. Okay, and so number two is embrace the cycles and seasons in your life. So I'm just going to give you an example of this. So for me, for what I struggle with is that sometimes I'm really like go, 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 go. And then I have these times where 
I'm not as productive. And that's where the criticism, criticism comes up. My body's saying it needs to rest and my mind needs to rest, but I'm not giving my mind any rest because it's saying you should be doing more. You should be doing better. You're not productive enough. You need to go. So what's really helped me in this is embracing the cycles and seasons in my life. So we're not always going to be like, go, 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 and just on point. Sometimes we need to rest. Sometimes we don't have any motivation. And I think it's really important to honor these cycles that we go through and understand them and bring compassion for ourselves when we're going through a time of rest and where we're not as productive as we normally are. And so number three, which is the rule of opposites, and I really love this technique it really helped me on my journey to really understanding my own perfectionism and breaking the cycles so when I notice that I'm working or I'm working on something and the self-critic comes in that I need to be doing more even though I'm doing literally the best that I can I will notice that self-critic and I will stop and do the opposite of what it wants me to do So I will literally get up and go for a walk and get some fresh air. Even though the self-critic is telling me, you need to keep going, you have to get this done, I do the opposite. Now, this was incredibly hard for me to do in the beginning when I learned this. I was like, well, I'm going to be incredibly unproductive. And so for me to, to go stop, no, put all my work down, walk out the door and go for a half an hour walk and come back was really hard at first. But the funny thing is, is that I started doing this every day. I I did this practice every day for like a month and I actually became more productive because of it. And the self-critic within started to take a step back. I could call it out right away when I saw it instead of it ruling over me and telling me what I need to do better or what I should be doing. So now we'll move on to number four, which is trust the process. So for example, in your past, you've gotten goals done. You've had dreams and goals that you wanted to accomplish and you've accomplished them. So I want you to think of a goal in particular. And if you're somebody that struggles with perfectionism and the self-critic, think about that time when you were going through that goal, when you were working up towards that goal and all the unnecessary stress and pressure that you put on yourself. And so I want you to think about in the present moment when you are trying to accomplish goals or you're trying to get something done, even if it's just to get through the day and you just have this goal to do everything right and in order, do you really need to put that extra stress and pressure on yourself? You understand that you're more than capable to get these things done. You've gotten to where you are at now. I know that we can think that this pressure is good, but there's healthy pressure and then there's unhealthy pressure. There's encouragement and then there's beating yourself up. You're perfectly capable, like I said, to get to where you are going and to trust in your process, to trust in yourself, to trust in the universe's process. You are going in the direction you're going because you're there. You're meant to be there because you are there. So can you trust in this process? Can you trust in yourself without putting that added pressure on yourself? And so number five, which is identify the self-critic. And I've talked about the self-critic a little bit in this video so far. So the tip I could give you is to identify this part within you. So notice when it comes out, what does it say to you? It's usually that little voice inside that is telling you, you can be doing better, you could be doing more, you're not doing good enough, or it's doubting you. You better get this done in the next two hours. And if you're not done, you're gonna be late for this. Why is this taking you so long? This has to be done right. If I have to stay up till midnight, then that's what I have to do. I don't know if this is gonna be good enough. What if I'm doing this all wrong? If I don't get this right, I'm gonna die. So start to notice when this self-critic, this part within you comes up. And you can just start by watching it at first. You don't have have to do anything. Just watch it, watch what it does, watch what it says, watch how it works. Just really take a step back and observe this part of you. Number six, which is understanding the functionality of the self-critic and this part of you and bringing compassion to it. 
So it's not about wanting to get rid of any parts of you or getting rid of the self-critic. So in the last step, I said, just watch it and observe it. Don't do anything. And this part, you're really trying to understand it and why it's there in the first place. So when I first started learning about the self-critic, I wanted to get rid of it. I thought that it was bad and that it was causing me more trouble than I needed. But when I started to understand that this aspect of myself, the self-critic, was really developed at a young age as a coping mechanism and a survival mechanism. So what is the self-critic trying to do? It's trying to protect you. It's saying, if you do this and this and this, you'll get to hear because I don't want you to be hurt. I don't want you to be disappointed. Most parts within us are actually trying to help us and they may have served us well in childhood, but now that we're adults, they don't serve us any longer and they actually create blocks in our lives. So recognizing this and recognizing the self-critic within and understanding and bringing compassion to it can allow it to kind of take a step back. And then this brings me into step number seven, which is having a conversation with the self-critic. So I'm going to give you an example of what I do. So when I notice this part that's coming up within me, and let's just say it's telling me to do more, I will recognize it, see it, and then I will understand that it's trying to protect me. And then I actually will have a conversation with it. And this is just to really build a relationship with that part of yourself so you're not just pushing it away. But you also want it to take a step back. You can even actually name your self-critic if you wanted to. I've never given them names, but I know that some of my clients like to do that. Um, And it really helps them to have a conversation with this part of themselves. So you can say, hi, self-critic or Fred, I see you and I know that you're trying to protect me but I don't need you to protect me anymore. I'm a grown man or I'm a grown woman and I got this. I've been doing this for however many years I've been here on this earth and you can just take a step back, it's okay. And so the more and more you do this with this part, the more and more it'll take a step back. It may start to come out even more because when you start addressing these parts of ourselves they can really flare up so if you do notice that it's coming up even more that's okay it just means that you're doing the work and you're actually making progress sometimes things get worse before they get better and then number eight which is one of the most important steps to me and that is that you bring gratitude and compassion for yourself pat yourself on the back for all the things that you've done even though your mistakes Pat yourself on the back. Show respect to yourself from where you've come from to where you are now. Gratitude is an incredibly potent and powerful state to be in. It can change your reality in an instant. When you're in gratitude, you cannot be beating yourself up. When you're in gratitude, you can't be telling yourself to do more because you already are everything. You already are it. You're perfect just the way you are. So now you've learned the eight steps that are incredibly powerful for breaking through these patterns of perfectionism. If you haven't seen my other video, which is on compassionate inquiry, and you aren't really sure what compassionate inquiry is, be sure to check out that video because it explains what the aspects are of compassionate inquiry and where it helped me to heal in my life. And if you like this video, be sure to hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you for watching. My name is Tess.